Good happy Monday evening, March 21, 2022. I'm Riley King. Welcome to this Monday evening edition of the Riley King Newscast, right here on the Riley King Network. Let's get started right now. First step, dog killed in Manchester shooting as man injured, jumping through window to escape. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Shooting took place shortly after 1 o'clock this morning. The suspect got away, but police say it was not a random attack. The victims knew the shooter. Manchester police still processing the scene Monday afternoon after an overnight shooting at 137 Orange Street. A witness saying she heard knocking, a brief conversation, and then gunshots. A person, a man, that was known to the victims had forced his way inside the apartment and nearly immediately started shooting. This all happened at about 1.15 Monday morning. Somebody started charging up the stairs, and because it was so late, I called the cops. And just as 911 answered, um, you heard two shots. Police have not said if there was more than one suspect involved, but according to neighbors who live in the multi-unit apartment building, two men entered the home while a third waited in a car. Soon after the gunshots rang out, they also heard breaking glass. A man who was inside of the house, the apartment actually, he ended up trying to leave, and in doing so, he dove through a glass window at, from the second floor and into the driveway, and then ended up running off asking for help, and he was later located on Myrtle Street. He must have dove out the window because he bounced off the car that's out there and then landed on top of the glass and just took off. Additional shots were fired, one of them killing a pit bull inside the apartment, according to police. Police, the suspects then ran away. Neighbors were shaken, but say it all happened very fast. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Cordon officials meet after voters decide to slash school budget by more than a half. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Miami University is a public research institution. Our skilled faculty develop students, students who change the world. Great minds choose Miami. Learn how Miami is accelerating ahead for the future. Well, Tom, the discussion will continue tonight after the vote to slash the school budget by 53% earlier this month. Now, voters amended the district's proposed budget of roughly $1.7 million down to just $800,000 by a vote of 20 to 14. However, that vote came during a meeting held on a Saturday during a snowstorm where only about 3% of the town's voters participated. Croydon is a small town with fewer than 80 students enrolled. The town itself has one school, the Croydon Village School. It serves 24 kids from kindergarten to fourth grade. The rest of the students are bused to nearby districts in Newport, Claremont, and Sunapee, and Croydon pays those districts to take their students. Now, the amended budget will limit Croydon's per-pupil spending to approximately $10,000 per student. However, tuition rates in nearby districts such as Newport are over $16,000 per student, and that does not include transportation or operation costs. Many are now worried that the amended budget will not be enough, and tonight that discussion will continue on what can be done to increase the budget or what can be done to operate under the school's budget. We'll have more on that tonight at 11, but for now, live in Croydon, Scott Cook, WMUR News. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Two more people die of COVID-19 in New Hampshire as hospitalizations fall. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Most people can name the food on their plate, but can they do it blindfolded? 
almost tastes like arugula. Maybe not chicken. This pork chop? Things are going to heat up on Blind Kitchen. Stream it for free only on Very Local. So COVID-19 coverage now and current hospitalizations down to 27. That's the fewest since late July. There are 356 new cases to report from the weekend and last week. Active cases now up to 911. There are two new COVID-related deaths to report tonight. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Mortgage property tax assistance available for New Hampshire homeowners. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. I serve for the place I call home. I serve to protect those around me. I serve as an intelligence analyst. I serve as a maintainer. Because I like fixing things. I serve because my dad did, and because his dad did too. I serve to learn things I've never learned in school. I serve as an airman in the Air National Guard. A new assistance fund is open tonight for Granite Staters struggling to pay their mortgage, property taxes, and other home costs. To qualify, you must own your home. And it must be your primary residence. You also need to have an income less than 125% of the medium income in your area. The program also provides counseling and legal services. When they might have fallen behind on their mortgage payments or property tax payments was masked in part by the foreclosure moratoriums and, and sort of related rules around uh, home loans that have expired now. And so some of the problems are just sort of coming to the surface now. There is a maximum benefit of about $20,000 per household. Homeowners can learn more about how to apply by heading to our website or mobile app. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. New Hampshire lawmakers consider plan to rebate vehicle registration fees. Let's take a listen to that video from WMUR News 9. Home is where life happens, and good housekeeping is where you get everything you need to bring your home to life. From science-backed product reviews to triple-tested recipes to genius organizing hacks, it's a whole world of possibility, all tested for you. Jen, as you said, those high gas prices are continuing, but representatives are not focused on a gas tax rebate anymore. Instead, they're turning their attention towards car registration. The proposal being debated would give $25 to any vehicle or trailer registered between July 1st of last year and June. Uh, this would cost the state about $40 million. The funds would come out of the state budget surplus. There will be no impact to the highway fund where the registration money normally goes. Now, when it comes to a moratorium on the state gas tax, some state representatives say it's just not an efficient use of money. It was going to require 92 additional people to uh, monitor or manage the gas tax rebate. And um, we also figured out that um, somebody would get maybe $10. The Finance Committee didn't vote on the car registration proposal today. There was skepticism on both sides of the aisle. Live in Manchester, Grace Feinerman, WMUR News. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. Kent Fountain in Lancaster badly damaged in a crash. A 19th century fountain in Lancaster was badly damaged Sunday when it was struck by a vehicle, town officials said. The Kent Fountain outside the post office on Main Street collapsed into several large pieces after it was struck by the vehicle. Lancaster town manager said officials are assessing the damage and determined how much it would cost to repair the fountain. He said the goal is to have it operating as 
a working fountain again, but it's unclear whether that's possible. The fountain was given to the town in 1889 by the sons of the late Richard Kent, a business owner who was active in the community. No details about the crash was immediately available. China passenger jet crashes, killing 132 on board. Let's take a listen to that video from ABC News. What if positive change was only one design away? Some say design is beyond most people's reach. We say it's already in your hands. So, what will you design today? We begin with that breaking news out of China, a Boeing 737 passenger plane crashing overnight. That's right, more than 130 people on board that plane. Search and rescue workers are on the scene right now, and our transportation correspondent, Gio Benitez, has been tracking the very latest on this developing story this morning. Good morning, Gio. Hey, Amy, good morning to you. Yeah, this is very concerning here because remember, the Boeing 737 is the most popular commercial plane in the world. Take a look at this drone video from Chinese Fire Rescue. You can see that crash site, a mountainous region of China. Chinese state media also posting this short clip that it says shows rescuers looking at the debris. Now, take a look at this chart from Flight Radar 24. It shows the altitude just plummet instantly. No word on any survivors, but again, 132 people on board. And of course, American investigators will want to look at this crash, but the Chinese will have to invite them in. Amy. And Gia, we all remember those unfortunate two deadly crashes involving Boeing jets in recent years. This wasn't the same model jet, correct? Exactly right, Amy. Those crashes were with the 737 MAX, a newer model. This was just a regular 737, and the plane itself was just six years old. So it's very important that we figure out exactly what happened here. All right, Gio Benitez, thank you very much. Well, hey there, GMA fans. Okay, and there you go on that video and that report. And that is it for this evening edition of the Riley King Newscast right here on the Riley King Network. Thank you for tuning in and watching. Have a great evening. Good night and goodbye.